the topic of discussion in this session is the gigantism and acromegaly both of these clinical syndromes result from sustained excess of growth hormone if you see the causes of the growth hormone excess it is mainly caused by the pituitary somatotropic adenoma which is the second most common pituitary adenoma not only that there are so many other causes like if you see the list over here the b9 tumors like even though the pituitary adenoma is the most common cause other than pituitary adenoma other tumors like craniopharyngioma meningiomas can also develop excessive growth hormone and other conditions like pituitary hyperplasia examples or the lactotroph hyperplasia during pregnancy and the tyrotrophs and gonadotroph hyperplasia not only that the very important factor is the somatotropic hyperplasia due to ectopic growth hormone releasing hormone can also cause increased uh, secretion of growth hormone there are approximately various malignant tumors which can cause excessive secretion of growth hormone for example you can see over here the germ cell tumors sarcoma cordoma and the pituitary carcinoma even though all these factors are rare not only that there are some of the metastatic cancers can also develop excessive growth hormone and eventually develop acromegaly and gigantism like lung and breast metastasis even though they will develop to a very minute extent the cysts like rachis cleft arachnoid dermoid all these can cause growth hormone excess syndrome other factors like pituitary abscess lymphocytic hypophysitis and the carotid arteriovenous fistulas comes under the etiological factors to develop excess growth hormone syndromes now what is the pathology and pathophysiology of growth hormone excess increased growth hormone results in increase in the insulin like growth factor 1 this igf1 is also called as somatomedin c which is produced from the liver in pituitary adenoma there are multiple acidophilic cells what you can see over here and these multiple acidophilic cells which are seen under the histological section of the pituitary adenoma which shows a various secretory granules and these granules contain the growth hormone and what are the clinical manifestations of excess growth hormone and we will discuss separately for gigantism and acromegaly gigantism manifests in children as tall stature where the adenoma appears before epiphyseal closure if you see the bone over here this is the growing bone of a child of 12 years of age and this is what you can see is the epiphyseal plate and this is called as the growing end of the bone and this is the place where mineralization of the bone occurs by means of osteoblasts so whenever there is a excess growth hormone there will be excessive mineralization by these osteoblasts at the epiphyseal plate that cause increase in the length of the long bones that's the reason especially in the gigantism there will be a taller long bones and no manifestations are seen in the short bones or in the cranial bones but in acromegaly it mainly develops after the closure of epiphyseal plate so there won't be an excessive growth of the long bones but there will be too much mineralization of the short bones and also cranial bones that is the reason there will be enlargement of the feet enlargement of the hands skull mandible that is the reason we will say that prominent jaw is a classical feature of acromegaly not only that enlargement of the internal organs can also seen in acromegaly examples are heart spleen and kidney mainly in the conditions 
of excessive growth hormone in the adults that is acromegaly insulin resistance resulting in hyperglycemia that is the reason the hyperglycemia developed because of excessive growth hormone in the adults it is called as pituitary diabetes mellitus other than this hyperglycemia the patient has symptoms of hypertension cardiomegaly and also cardiac failure and these acromegaly patients may also have or presents with bitemporal hemianopsia and other visual disturbances owing to the possible compression of the optic chiasm by the adenoma and the compression of the optic chiasm is more commonly seen with the macro adenoma when compared to that of micro adenomas the clinical features of acromegaly are mainly attributed to the high serum concentrations of both growth hormone as well as insulin like growth factor 1 which is growth hormone dependent so here the excessive growth hormone as well as excessive insulin like growth factor 1 have both somatic as well as metabolic effects so what are the somatic effects of the igf1 and the growth hormone the somatic effects are the stimulation of the growth of many tissues such as skin connective tissue cartilage bone viscera and many epithelial tissues and the metabolic effects includes nitrogen retention that is the reason there will be elevated of blood urea nitrogen and also insulin antagonism can cause pituitary diabetes that is hyperglycemia and also lipolysis that can cause losing of weight that's the reason weight loss is seen in the acromegaly so now let us talk about what are the investigations for the diagnosis of acromegaly or gigantism the best initial investigation or we can see the initial investigation of choice is the levels of serum igf1 and the confirmatory test so what is a confirmatory test for the growth hormone excess failure to suppress growth hormone production in response to an oral load of glucose is the confirmatory test or the test of choice now let us talk about the treatment the treatment includes medical management as well as surgical management now first let us talk about the medical management the first drug is a bromocriptin bromocriptin is a dopamine analog it is used to be the agent of choice earlier mainly for the gigantism but nowadays we are not using this drug because it is replaced by octreotide and next what is the octreotide octreotide is a long acting somatostatin analog which is used to be the agent of choice most commonly nowadays that is the reason for this session you have to remember that octreotide is a treatment of choice under medical management for the gigantism or acromegaly next one is landriotide the landriotide is a sustained release formulation of the somatostatin analog is a another available agent other than octreotide this medication administered intramuscularly every 2 to 4 weeks and it is safe and also effective in treating adults with acromegaly compared to that of gigantism and the last one and the last drug under medical management is pegvisomant it is a growth hormone receptor antagonist which is a new drug used nowadays as a daily subcutaneous injectable forms so after the medical management next is the surgical management surgical management is the treatment of choice where medical management fails or medical management is not indicated or medical management cannot treat the condition so here if you see the transpenoidal surgery is the treatment of choice or the surgery of choice for the discrete pituitary microadenomas and macroadenomas so this is what you need to know about the treatment options which are available under excessive growth hormone in gigantism and acromegaly and uh, by this we completed the topic of gigantism and acromegaly